I get this story about um, the... I don't know when this was from, but I follow this woman who has this model alliance. I think because uh, she was on Up With Chris. I'm not sure how it's how she's in my timeline. But and apparently it um, she started reprinting stuff about Terry Richardson because I didn't I didn't know anything. I followed this and you had mentioned it. Who is Terry Richardson? How did you come to work with Terry Richardson? Well, um, for time, he was probably the most famous fashion photographer in the world. And is, he, d- he also did other kinds of photography. Um, and I first met him at a party for suicidegirls.com back in 2003, I believe. All right. So, 2004. Uh, so Jamie meets this. Uh, uh, this g- now, wait, now, what is suicidegirls.com? What was that? Was that a website? It was and is a website. It's sort of a social network slash pinup, alternative pinup site. Okay. Very, it's very aughts. Very up, uh, totally aughts. I mean, that's the thing is that at, during the aughts, I was already in the teens. And so I was, I zoomed past that. <laughs> okay. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't pick up on it. Apparently it was a big thing and I didn't know about it. Um, all right. So, so you meet this guy and he says like, you got a model for me. Yeah. Um, I mean, he took some pictures of me at the party, just looking cute or whatever. And I was like, pretty stoked on all of it because I was 19. I might have even been 18 at the time of this party. I got to check the date. And you knew him at the time? Like you were aware of his reputation at the time? No, not really. I was more into Suicide Girls than him. And so he says what? He says, come model for me or? Yeah, he had his assistant get my information. He travels around with his assistant? Was that happening? Like, Was he at the party professionally? Yeah, yeah. It was it was this like very very Y two K era thing in Williamsburg, where in what's probably like a fucking hotel now, but um, they had it set up so they were doing some shooting in half of the building. It was in this warehouse, um, and they had a live feed so the people in the party could watch. It was very. Uh, that yeah. is so that. It was very panoptic, you know, peaches on the stereo. Yeah, I don't want to get into peaches right now. But, <laughs> um, all right, and so so the so then what happened? Um, well, his assistant got in touch with me and asked me to come to his studio for a shoot, and they were going to pay me with a signed print, and I looked it up, and that was worth money. And I had been doing a little bit of naked internet modeling here and there for a little extra pocket change in college. So I thought it would be a cool thing to do. Okay, so you're going to, and they're just going to pay you in in a print, a signed print. Is that common? Wow. I don't know. Right. I mean, wait, that's that's okay. All right, so you go there, and it was a bad deal. Well, I yeah. mean, it sounds like a bad deal, but I can also understand, like a 19 year old, like right. I mean, I the I I, I think I drove a car down and back from Florida for like 250 bucks. And I thought I was as the richest guy in the world. I just fucking yeah. nailed, I just, it. I just nailed I it. I just got an incredible deal. And I'm going they to gave Jacksonville. me $20 to eat during Dude, the whole time. I All I need a, is one wow. bag of like, uh, of, uh, of, I have an expense of co- account of for co- Jolly chocolate Ranchers. coffee beans. And oh. I can get that for like 12 bucks. I'm going to pocket the other 13. All right. So, um, <laughs> so, so, so you go there, and what happens? Is the assistant there? How does this work? Yeah, I mean, I should also say that I looked him up a little bit, and um, and he was I a legit photographer. He was, yeah, he was legit. He was pretty well known. Yeah, and not only legit, very well known, right? Like yeah, maybe even the most at that time, prominent. he was cool. He was in with all the cool people that I thought were cool at the time. Like what brands like, was he? Like Vice, right? Very heavily associated with the Vice of that time period. Not so much anymore. Okay, so you go, and what happens? Well, this is an excellent question, because the way I've been telling this story for years and years, I just found out is wrong. Um, 
according to my original story, I went there to model for him twice, and he only got fresh the second time. But a reporter from New York Magazine recently sent me some pictures that prove he at least got grabby with me in the first session as well, wow. which is something I completely blocked out of my memory. Wait a second. So why are there pictures of him being grabby of you? I don't understand. Th- that's like, that's his thing. Like, I didn't really realize this at the time. He puts himself in the pictures? Yeah. Like, this info was not publicly available before I started talking about it. But, yeah, that's kind of his thing. He uh, he invites young, naive girls. Some of them are fashion models. Some of them are not. To shoot in his studio. And it's got this aura of professionalism because his assistants are standing around. And just kind of gets naked and tries to see what he can get them to do on camera. He gets naked too? Yeah, a lot of the time. Sort of sounds like the stories that came out about the American Apparel guy, actually. They're very similar. Similar stories. They're basically the same person. I mean, it's like same generation, same mentality, same harassment stories, same auths. Same look. Same look, yeah. So you do the first one and you, what what is, do you remember what your attitude must have been? Did you block it out or was it like, you just assumed that this was normal and that you've just got us. this is what it takes to be in this business or something? Is that what you were trying to do, be in that business, the modeling business? Well, no, I was never trying to be a fashion model. I'm five foot four. I'm not delusional. Okay. Well, I don't know <laughs> but, what the parameters are. For but that, I but. was like a naked girl for hire. I did Suicide Girls. I did some other stuff. And I assumed that this would help me get more work and more money for my work. And so, um, and so he, they asked you back, is that it? And does he get more creepy at that one, even more? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, just to recap a little bit of the story, um, what did he ask me to do first? Um, and I also, I will say that he definitely benefited from my naivete and that like, 19 year old well that's why you go after a 19 year old too and that 19 year old belief that you're like smart enough to navigate this world and get what you want out of it without having someone get one over on you which i don't know if anyone possibly could be right so anyway um let's see i asked to keep my underwear on because i had my period and he wanted to make tea with my tampon and i was like ew no and yeah yeah and th- the whole time he's got this like really sort of ghoulishly upbeat attitude. Like, I love tampons. Oh, this is so much fun. And everyone around him is like, oh, yeah, this is so fun. Aren't you having so much fun? And I'm like, yeah, yeah. So wait, there are people around? Yeah. Like, are they? Are they're, they... they're taking most of the pictures, too, by the way. So wait a second. How many people are there and who are they? Uh, there was this one guy named Keichi who was a Japanese photographer, I believe, and this woman named Leslie Lesson, who is a stylist, and her role in most of this seems to be to make the girls feel safe and do damage control afterwards and make sure that they're not going to make any trouble. So, And have I- any of these people sp- uh, like spoken out after? Because you wrote about this... Um, and yeah. then, and then it's sort of all like, I mean, I should, I should finish the story, okay, uh, sorry, get ahead. to the main event, which is he somehow, he, I mean, he, he requested a hand job and he received a hand job. And to this day, I don't really know why I did that. And I felt really embarrassed about it for a long time, which is why I didn't tell anyone for a really long time. Right. But um, in retrospect, yeah, there was coercion involved. He dropped a bunch of names. He uh, And is this in front of everybody in the, the studio? Yeah. Yeah. And everyone's acting like this is so cool. And if you say no, you're like, you hate fun. You're like right. a fucking buzzkill. Jesus. And this and, and so what happened? So so how many years later do you write about this? Okay, I was 19 when it happened, and I was 25 when I wrote about it, so six years. And so you were the first person to sort of, like, expose this guy, right? Yeah, I mean, I had an inkling that it wasn't just to me. Right. Like, um, I figured he probably did it with a lot of other people, both 
fashion models who were directly uh, coming to him for work and randos like me who were coming across him for various reasons. Um, so my friend Jennifer was working at this women's site called The Gloss, and she wrote a post about it um, after the model Re Rasmussen accused him of stuff she'd heard secondhand. And Jennifer wrote a post like, well, until an actual model comes forward and says, I felt bad about it, there's really nothing anyone can figure out about it. And I was like, well, come to think of it, this is an experience that I had. And like... Wow. Did she know that you had a, a history with that guy? No. no. Oh, wow. She didn't. And like, I probably... I didn't think anyone was going to care or I probably would have tried to get more money for this story or like a right. bigger byline, but I just, I wanted to get it out there for myself. Right. I had no idea that anyone was gonna care. And like a lot of people didn't care at the time. And so after this, was there like a flood of stuff that came out? What, what, what came out in the wake of this? Well, not right away. At first it was just me and I was like, like I, I got it out. Like once I get an idea in my head to do something, I have to do it or I feel bad inside. So I didn't even think that hard about it. I think I just did it. And, and, in, one, and in one sense, and I think you, you reference it in the piece that you're not a model. So, I mean, you're not in this, you, you didn't feel like you were in this business um, as much. No, so you didn't have to worry about like your career, I guess. Yeah, and people have used that against me to say like, well, you know, why'd you do it if you weren't trying to be a fashion model? But like, this is the only reason I've been able to talk about it. Why'd you do it if you weren't trying to be a fashion? So what if you were trying to be a fashion model? What difference does yeah, that make? Well, I guess the argument is that his coercive power is stronger over someone who's like a non in debt to their agency. I don't know. It's, it's, That's it's bullshit. Yeah. Weird. It's very weird. It's, it's, yeah. Well, people have said a lot of different things about <sighs> it to me over the years. So, um, so what, uh, so, and then it, it started coming out more and more years later from other models. Yeah. Um, at first there was really almost nobody backed me up at the time. One of the only people who did was Tavi Gevinson. I think she was like 12 years old. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, good for her. And I was like, oh shit, like, what did I do? Like, I was freelancing for Vice at the time, and my relationship with Vice was over for about five years after that. And I heard from people why, that I why thought is were that? my friends. And why, what happened at Vice? Like, who, were they, were they, was it people were friends I mean, with him or something? It, it was a very different publication than it is today. Right. I'll just say. And uh, the editor in chief was. Who was that? Good friends with him, uh, Jesse Pearson. Okay. So I don't want to like make any accusations that are going to get me sued, but like the writing was on the wall. I have well, you don't have to say that it was because of happened. anything. It's just like you had a good relationship with Vice. They were friends. Then all of a sudden, you didn't yeah, have a like, good uh, relationship with Vice. Yeah. I mean, that doesn't. Uh, maybe that was just completely coincidental. Yeah, sure. It's <laughs> definitely. Um, possible as is you know the chances it's also possible we're going to get hit by a comet i'm not saying that these have the same possibilities i'm not a math person but it is uh None less, of us are less than in probabilities we're very opposed to math on this show in fact so okay so and then did you get when people started coming out did you ever hear from other women who who went through this who said thank you for doing that or yeah i did actually it's been kind of nice um at first i was like uh, what the fuck did I do? Like, I've ruined my career. I'm going to be associated with him for the rest of my life, and no one's going to want to hire me to do anything. But um, since then, a lot of other women have come out with their own stories, and it's been very validating for me. And um, I actually have been in contact with uh, Charlotte Waters, who came out a few years ago with a nearly identical a story model? about him. She was, an, she was an art school student at the time. She was another sort of random person that he impressed with his uh, oeuvre, his influence or whatever, and um, did what pretty much sounds like a borderline assault in his shoot yeah. with her. But like none of this stuff is technically illegal although some of the things probably qualify i should also make the point that it's not 
there's no law against sexually harassing an independent contractor. And that's what most models are classified as. Interesting. It, only in, in some states do they have protection against sexual harassment. Wow. Well, uh, sorry you had to go through that, um, but good for you for blowing the whistle on that. Uh, dude, seems like a total creep and asshole. Thank you. Um, yeah, I don't feel good about what happened, obviously, and I've felt really embarrassed and guilty about it through the years, but uh, I think I've come to a place where I feel good about how I've handled it since then. What and was the, like, imp uh, the guilt, what, like, what did you feel, like, why, why guilty? Like, guilty that you had hurt him in some way, or guilty no. that you, what, what was it? I mean, I had a lot of people saying, like, oh, well, you could have said no, like, if you were traumatized by this, you did this to yourself, and, like, I, I get where they're coming from, kind of, but also, like, if I were him, and I'm not, but, like, any reasonable good person, if they hook up with someone, even, let's say he thinks that it's fully consensual and he's really as naive as he pre pretends to be about how coercion works, which I don't believe for a fucking second because he's not out there doing this stuff to Kate Moss, right. but even if he was... Like, if I hooked up with someone and I thought that they had a good time, and then afterwards I found out this person had PTSD from it and had completely dissociated from their memory, a good person would be like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. Like, I had no idea. How can I prevent this from happening in the future? Right. But he's never going to do that. Did, did you ever contact him afterwards? Did he, did he have an opportunity for, to hear from you that you were upset about that or to hear from no. other people? No. I moved on. I never collected my print. I just wanted to forget about it. Uh, that I mean, that is an indication. Like, why, why didn't she come get her print? Everything went great. Yeah. And it's not like I was a prude either. Not that it matters, but like... I had modeled for photographers before, and I had had casual sex before, and this felt very different to me. Huh. I, I mean, I you know, like, seems to me a guy who's doing that would be, have, like, very specific ground rules of, like, I uh, need to be professional. There needs to be, like, like, literally signatures, and I need to be able to sit down with you beforehand because this is my method, and... Yeah, you really want to err on the side of caution right. when you're doing anything like that. Yeah, like it sounds even like in, bullshit. In pornography, like there is a right. list of things that you'll do and you won't do and you discuss it beforehand and different things get more money. And he could, he, if he wanted to, he could go out and find people who are comfortable with doing pornographic stuff on camera. There are a lot of them, but I think he gets off on violating people's boundaries and getting them to do stuff that they don't necessarily want to do. Right. And I think if he, if that was his method, he wouldn't get like the type of shoots with like Senator Obama's coming in. If he was like, I don't know, maybe what, he would, but he, 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 get, he, 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 he shot with a picture Obama. of Senator Obama. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. yeah. No, he was a high profile guy. And I think that that's exactly, it, yeah, it's definitely, there's no like misdirected sense of like, edginess like yeah he specifically liked violating people that was like all the accounts mm, that it's came all out spontaneous yeah. it's all fun right. isn't this fun right and like i also want to say like in the course of writing about this stuff like it was never my mission to destroy him like if anything i just want him to think a little bit more about what he's doing and stop the main thing is i wanted him to stop did you get public criticism from it I mean, yeah, I got all kinds of nasty comments from people. I got nasty comments from people I thought were my friends. Did they, did they like, uh, like, I don't understand like the logic of somebody saying like, it's cool what he's doing, but what you're doing is not cool. Like, I mean, if it's, if it's like, okay, that's just the way, that's his process. But your process, which involves just writing about what actually happened is somehow problematic. Yeah. I mean, I mean, that's even giving the benefit of the doubt to those people. Yeah, I mean, I guess their thinking is, um, you knew what you were getting into. You did this to yourself, like you've. He no knew right what he was getting into. It. It's not like he thought that you didn't have. You know what I mean? Like the, it's one thing for 
and I don't think it's appropriate, but I'm just saying, like, if someone has that logic of, like, look, he's an artist, and you were involved in the process, and uh, you had the ability to, you know, say a safe word at any point during that process. Um, but uh, he also consented to, you know, with a live person to have them talk about the experience and to interpret it. And uh, probably gave more, you know, just as explicit consent to that as anything you're doing. And you're not, and he doesn't have to do anything at that point. Yeah, He's already I mean, done it. I'm glad you brought that up. Um, I think the defense of its art is something he and others have used a lot over the years to try to muddy the waters around issues of consent. Um, just because it's art doesn't make it magically exempt from the rules of human ethics. Yeah. That I've always well, this came up in the, in very the uh, Brando movie. I mean, what was I forget that story, but we talked about it a long time ago. That that really I can't I shouldn't have brought it up because I cannot remember the name of it. But there was a some some infamous Brando movie that in the seventies. Tango. Uh, yeah, Last Tango in Paris, I think, which is actually a pretty terrible movie in my view. It's very overrated, but regardless, that's irrelevant. It came out that there was a scene that essentially they like pre-planned an assault on the actress in it. And that whole and the whole spin around it was like, well, this will be a spontaneous reaction. It's art. Like even if that I makes, mean, it's fucking nonsense. Yeah. You can't do it. Even if it makes the best art in the world, like that doesn't make it okay. Right. Well, yeah, but and also it's also just to me. I mean, maybe this is just my way of thinking. It's like obviously just it, it, it it's pre it's it's concocted. It's nonsense. I don't e I like I don't even take that at face value. It wouldn't be justified in and of itself, but I don't even buy it to begin with. I mean, I think it's possible uh they they bought it, but that's so what? Yeah, I mean, of course, just, of course. So what? Of course. It's just. Um, of course. I'm sure uh, there are silly serial killers out there who are like. Look, ISIS should say they're artists. Folk. It's folk art for me to, art to skin doing... these people and put them on, wear Whoa. them on, or whatever. Whoa, it is. What are you I mean, watching that new my, Netflix show or something? No, Jesus. but my point is, is that like, you don't get a pass. It doesn't matter how you justify it to yourself. You just don't get a pass. Well, he has gotten a pass for many years from a lot of people, and I think the fashion industry is especially immune to any kind of shame or introspection, but that finally seems to be changing. Uh, somebody just uh, I am and said that we should be putting you on screen. We don't have the... Uh, well, first of all, uh, Jamie's in charge of who's on screen at <laughs> any given time, um, but we don't, have, we don't have that third camera set up, right? I didn't know it was here yet. Well, it, it came last week. Huh? Um, what? But we will put it up. What? We'll do it again if uh, Jamie. But uh, Jamie's more conscious of that than anybody. That's she's in, that's her job. She is in charge of the switcher. Yeah. I'll but put myself on screen. It's a very powerful position. <laughs> we'll put. Um, we could try and run that one. I guess this one right here in front of me. That little web thing with literally that is taped onto a stick <laughs> <laughs> um all right well we'll you know uh it came up today jamie came in and said that she'd gotten i also think it's really interesting what you said like in terms of a perspective and correct me if i'm wrong but that like say this started coming out several years ago and he said oh like i stand corrected here let's talk let's figure this out i seriously fucked up there might have been a road to like it not ending in him being banned from Condé Nast. Yeah, like that's all I ever wanted. Right. From any of this. I just think that's a really important point because part of what happens in these stories is people's like a whole neat, like one of the kind of like diversions is that, oh, this is just about destroying people's careers. And I don't read that from, mo I mean, I first and foremost, it's like exposing ba dangerous behavior. And then it's like, I know, I mean, we've talked about it. You're writing with the intention of like just shifting behavior. Yeah. 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 Like I mean, kind of very practical Very level. practical I want stuff. I to solve right. the immediate problem right. of right. him molesting human beings who are just trying to I'm do their job. And what's funny is that that thing with Ben Affleck that came out and it was like, you know, it was a, it was like a smaller thing on a relative scale. But an actress said like, you know, he grabbed me in 2003 and he just responded in a tweet and he was like, you're right. I apologize. You know, correct. 
And then that was it. <laughs> like the story didn't keep bubbling because he was like, correct. Well, also, I mean, you know, yeah. just even, well, you see this, I think, just with, with assholes in general, and you can divine intent after these moments. It's one thing for Donald Trump not to uh, have the acumen to um, console someone whose son has died in, uh, you know, in the military. It's another to come out the next day and say, like, you know, it's her problem. There's degrees to these things. Anybody could fuck up in a call, but not everybody can say, I don't care. I uh, hope I hope your husband's last meal was fried chicken. Do they have that in Egypt? All right. Hi, folks. Sam Cedar here. We still need your help on our Patreon page. YouTube ads have come back, but not nearly as much as we had before. So if you can help us out, any little bit helps. Head over to our Patreon page right at this URL, and you'll help us keep helping you by making videos.